What's going on guys, Super Savage789 uh, here, bringing you guys in a video, and today, I'm very excited to tell you guys that we're coming back to What If The Governor Showed Up Early for Part 4. Now, you guys have really wanted this series to return, and I've been really lazy about it, uh, but now I'm coming back with it. And if you guys want to see this series continue, 100 likes, and you'll get the next part. But without further ado, let's get into today's video. We left off with the gang being at Terminus, so we'll pick up from there. The initial attack on Terminus pretty much goes the same, with Carol being the true MVP who saves everyone. The only difference is, Karen is able to stop Martin from grabbing Judith. The group then leave Terminus and begin roaming through the woods. Dale would be upset that the governor died, but Rick tells him that there was simply no other way. With the sinister look in Rick's eyes, as well as the fact that Shane is backing him up, Dale would begin to get worried. Everyone would also learn that Laurie is alive, however Daryl doesn't know where she is. Shane and Rick would be rather gun-ho about trying to find her, but the rest of the group make them focus up. They have no leads, but they'll begin searching as soon as they can, when they're safe. The gang would end up hearing screaming in the woods, and move to help, saving Gabriel. They then make it back to his church. They head to town for supplies, where Bob would still be bit. Dale, Andrew, and Glenn are the ones who go to the gun store, where Dale explains how he's beginning to worry about Rick. It's looking like he's losing any signs of humanity. Both Glenn and Andrew think he's being crazy, but Dale would keep his stance. That night at the church, it wouldn't be the cheery, peaceful scene that it was in canon. Rick would be trying to learn as much as he can about where Laurie is, with Daryl helping out best he can. Bob takes the opportunity to slip out the church, where he'd still be taken by the remaining Terminus survivors. They eat his leg, and he reveals he's tainted meat. Daryl and Carol would also have their talk at the car, and begin pursuing the people who kidnapped Laurie. The group still discuss about going to fight, where they ultimately off-guard the Terminus group, leaving them at their mercy. Dale tries to speak out, telling Rick that he doesn't have to do this. Rick would look at Dale, and tells him quite simply that he made a promise to them. He then kills Garrett, with a few of the others going along with it. Tyrese and Dale would be burying the Terminus group, but the duo are both expressing how much they hate this. Tyrese would open up about Lizzie and Mika, which would horrify Dale, further putting a wedge between him and the group. Over at the hospital, Laurie would wake up recovered from some injuries, and she's put to work. Her mindset right now would be a rather weak one, as she still believes her entire family is dead, especially after seeing Carl get shot. So being in a hospital and helping people would be nice for her, to put her mind away. While the hospital isn't perfect, I don't think that Laurie would try to escape like Beth did. She would become Dawn's friend during this time, as well as Noah's. This means that Noah doesn't get the chance to escape and is stuck at the hospital for the time being. So when Daryl and Carol arrive in Atlanta, they wouldn't lose their weapons. It also means that without the wasted time from Noah, Carol would never get hit by the car, meaning that she'd stick with Daryl and make it back to the group. Without the added drama from people trying to kill Carol, Laurie would further be hypnotized by the hospital group. Daryl and Carol will turn to the group and inform them they think they know where Laurie is. The group that go to get her is Shane, Rick, Mill, Daryl, Martinez, and Michonne. Andrew and Glenn both want to go, but Dale asks them to stay behind, instead stating that Michonne's capabilities would clearly be more useful. As the group are getting ready to leave, Shane approaches Dale. He asks him what he's up to, with Dale playing dumb. Obviously, Shane doesn't buy it. Dale insists that he's simply making sure the church is secure, but Shane, again, isn't buying it. The group then leave to go and save Laurie. When arriving at Atlanta, without Tyrese there due to not possessing the room in the car to take him, the group would go with Rick's original plan of picking people off silently until they find Laurie. No one in the group has an issue with that, so they would sneak in, beginning to enact their plan. Laurie would be doing a rounds and is the first person to notice one of the officers dead. She's about to call out to people, but realizes that she'll only attract the people to her. So she grabs a gun off the officer's person and begins to sneak around. She glances someone and tries shooting them, but they duck under cover. It alerts the guards, and so a gunfight begins with Rick's group at Dawn's. Rick would find his way inside Dawn's office, where a fistfight begins. Obviously, Rick is much stronger than her, so he beats her down quite easily. He's about to snap her neck when he hears someone put a bullet in the chamber. He turns around and sees Laurie, shocking him. He gets up, and the duo run to each other, hugging just like they did the last time they lost each other. Taking the opportunity, Dawn gets up and stabs Rick in the hip, making him collapse. She then grabs his gun. Laurie raises a gun at Dawn, who is forced to raise hers back. Dawn tells Laurie that she needed to do it to survive. Put the gun down and help her stop the rest of them. Her past relationships can't compare to the good they do there. Laurie is unshaken though, but it's quite clear that Dawn is really nervous. Behind her, Shane appears and sees Rick on the ground. He then says, Laurie? She turns around quite quickly, making eye contact with Shane. At this, Dawn panics and shoots Laurie clean through the head. Both Shane and Rick become enraged. Shane shoots Dawn's fingers off to stop her shooting anymore. Rick then stands up and grunts angrily that she's his. He 
then beats her to death, while Shane takes care of the majority of the people in the hospital. Meanwhile, Daryl finds Noah cowering in fear and realizes he's captive, offering him a hand. While the group are distraught about Laurie's death, they would end up adding Noah to their party. Back at the church, Dale would begin going around, asking certain people to leave of him right now. Rick has become a monster, and they can't risk him turning like that on them. No one would agree though. Glenn tells Dale that they can bring Rick back, but obviously the old man isn't certain about this. He ultimately won't go anywhere without Andrea, who would want to stay. So he reluctantly stays with them for the time being. The gang would return where Rick hugs Carl and Tears, which is where the mid-season finale would end. The group would continue moving to check out Noah's old community. Instead of Tyrese being off-guarded, it'd be Karen who would be bitten and dies in that episode. So the next episode, it consists of Tyrese being emotional, as well as Rick, Shane, and Carl. Rick would be mumbling to himself, talking to the imaginary Lori. Without a phone nearby, Rick would be looking into a reflection of himself, imagining it as Lori. Dale will then catch him with a worried look, with Rick simply walking away. Meanwhile, Tyrese would be talking to Shane about how he looks so strong. From what he's heard, him and Lori are quite close. Shane admits that he misses her, but he doesn't have time to grieve. He needs to be strong for Judith and Carl. Tyrese understands, and relates to Shane. The episode ends with Aaron meeting the group, with people being even more aggressive towards him. The large majority of the group decides to go and scout ahead, with Dale deciding to stay behind. Shane glances at him suspiciously, but Rick allows it. We get to see some interesting dialogue between Dale and Rick about how to handle Aaron, with Rick being untrusting and threatening, and Dale being a pacifist and trusting Aaron. Rick and Dale then get into a shouting match, with Dale telling Rick to cut this out. He's pretty far gone right now, but it's not too late to recover some of that humanity. Rick snaps at him that he's keeping everyone alive, but Dale snaps back, asking if he means just like how he kept Laurie alive. In response, Rick punches Dale, but he keeps going. He tells Rick that if they hadn't barged in there, maybe things would have gone differently. Dale will then head outside of the barn, recognizing that maybe it is truly too late to save his friend. The gang continue moving with Aaron, where they'd meet Eric and then ultimately arrive at Alexandria. Deanna would want to interview everyone, which they'd all be okay with. A few things that come out of this. Andrew would talk about Woodbury and how they're quite used to the community lifestyle, which Deanna would be somewhat glad about. They would mention how these people are good, but they've lost their way. The outside world is so cruel, so he hopes that here they'll be able to return to who they used to be. He also warns Deanna that she just took a gamble bringing them in, because if they don't revert, it's all over for her. Finally, in Mel's interview, she'd ask how he lost his hand, with him talking about how Rick made him do it. This would further add suspicion to the group. Deanna would then still give the group the two houses. Jesse still meets the group and gives a haircut to a few people like Shane. Rick would refuse, however, as he's a bit more feral at this moment. The gang still have typical interactions with people at Alexandria, and during these interactions, Spencer would flirt with Andrea. Deanna would also start assigning jobs to the group during this time. Michonne tries to warn Deanna that Rick isn't of stable mind, but she sees the good in him and ignores her advice. So Rick, Shane, and Michonne would all become officers to keep the peace inside Alexandria. Martinez, Noah, Tara, and Glenn will be going outside the wall on runs with Aiden and Nicholas. Andrea would become Deanna's right-hand lady due to her lawyer background, and with no Maggie, she fits the role. Tyrese would be placed on the construction team, and Sasha becomes a lookout. Carol still makes meals for people, they would help out with Olivia with taking count of their rations, Gabriel also becomes a priest, but he was already a priest. As for Mel and Daryl, after talking with Aaron, the duo both become scouts and new people. This is a weird job for Mel to have, but he is a good judge of character, and is able to take care of a bad situation if one were to occur. Mel would also get a new prosthetic arm, which is more like the one Aaron gets in canon. Rick, Carol, Daryl, Mel, and Shane would all make the plan of taking guns to keep themselves safe. They then head to a party to celebrate the new arrivals, with Carol promising to sneak out from the party to get guns. During this party, Shane and Jesse really hit it off. Daryl and Mel would skip out on the party where they have dinner with Aaron, leading to them getting their jobs as I previously mentioned. I also don't think Dale would attend the party. There was a lot of bad blood between him and the group, and so he'd rather not attend and ruin it for everyone. Instead, he decides to take stock again to pass the time. At the party, due to Tyrese being alive, Sasha wouldn't have an outburst and is able to have a much better time. It would also be Andrew and Glenn who make Noah feel welcome. Instead of Sasha having an outburst at the party, it'd be Rick. He sees Lori and lets out a shout before quickly running out of there. Michonne and Deanna share a look before Michonne goes after him. She spots him and begins calling out to him but he ignores her, continuing to walk away. He's mumbling about how he needs to find Lori. She grabs his arm which causes him to freak out, telling her he needs to follow. Michonne would restrain Rick until he calms down, who ends up sobbing. She looks upon him saddened, 
relating to what he's going through. When Carol sneaks out for the weapon, she'd run into Dale, who asks her what she's doing. She confesses to Dale that they need these weapons for safety in case this place goes sideways. Dale asks her if Rick put her up to this, and she tells him no, but obviously he can see through this lie. He begs her not to do this, but she knows she has to, telling Dale the only way to stop her is to shoot her. Sam then shows up and allows for Carol to rush away, leaving Dale with a kid, which is where we're going to leave off for right now. If you guys enjoyed this part, hit the like button, as again, 100 likes, make sure that the next part will drop. To be honest, I kind of didn't really want to continue this series. After the governor left, it kind of felt less unique, but after talking the Lytro and after seeing you guys asking for it, I decided to come back to it. This series is definitely not as boring as I thought it would be, with all the new character changes, because obviously you've swapped out you swapped out Maggie and Beth, and then you've obviously taken away Abraham, Rosita, and Eugene. And now we have some of the original cast surviving, like Andrea, Dale, Merle, other people. And so yeah, it's just it's it's gonna be good for ages. So keep watching and hit the like button and subscribe and all that stuff. And uh yeah, bye.